Okay, great. Can everybody hear me okay? Okay, it's great to be here. Uh, great to be back at Berkman. And I am uh, going to speak just a little bit about uh, uh, OER for scale uh, through the lens of uh, some of the trials and tribulations we've been going through uh, with connections over the last uh, 13 years or so. So we're going to talk a bit about scale. I think everybody in this room is, is united by a vision, by a drive to, to move away from the, the yesterday and today's factory-based education world, right? And move to a, a new world and, and a, a world much more uh, organized like an ecosystem system where we have tremendously rich, diverse resources that are available for all to use and to improve. And, and this is really, I think, the, the ethos that the uh, OER movement is trying to, trying to pursue. I would argue, though, that uh, in spite of our best efforts over the last, say, decade, uh, there is still a lot of room for improvement, right? There's a lot of room uh, for us to grow and to improve this movement and to scale it up so that we can eventually uh, make this factory model a, a thing of the past, okay? And the, the critical thing that I'm going to talk about today are some of the, the, the main issues that we've been thinking about for the last uh, two or three years with regards to connections and to think about how to really take it uh, uh, from it today's scale uh, to a, a truly world-beating uh, world kind of scale. And so hopefully these are, are some lessons that could be of use uh, for, the, for the broader community. So the question is how to scale. So I, I'm going to argue that in order to, to really uh, uh, have OER make the impact on the education world that it, it really truly deserves to make, we need to move from a, the current model that you could call OER 1.0 zero that's really fundamentally I would argue based on in, informal sharing uh, of resources that is really focused on the resources themselves are in OER is for resources uh, a, a world that is as Kathy talked about fragmented by in, in, both intellectual property different licenses and also fragmented by different all kinds of different technologies and also frankly, uh, all too often having a lack of a sustainable uh, a business model behind. So what I, I'm going to talk a little bit about are, are some of the things we've been thinking about uh, moving into a world of, of, we'll call OER 2.0, where we're thinking almost in a step back in the past, right? Thinking about turnkey solutions, thinking about uh, uh, learning outcomes rather than uh, uh, resources, thinking about new kinds of scalable platforms and also new kinds of business models. So let's talk just briefly about turnkey solutions. Uh, how many people have read this wonderful book, Crossing the Chasm? Show of hands. Everybody here needs to buy this book, okay? Basically, it's a, it's a beautiful book on marketing that talks about the penetration of new ideas and new technologies. People have the concept in their mind of a bell curve of the population, and they think that any new idea or technology is going to just smoothly flow in from the, the visionaries and the uh, initial enthusiasts just smoothly through, uh, through the marketplace, okay? The problem is that this is just not the case and that there's a yawning chasm that lies between the techno-visionaries and early adopters and all the rest of the population. And I would argue that uh, uh, connections in particular is really uh, uh, something that has caught on with this side of the curve and yet is, has had a tremendous uh, difficulty, right, over the last 12 or 13 years trying to cross this chasm into the mainstream. And in order to do, in order to do this, what we need to do is make the, the, the road to adoption much, much easier for uh, materials like, like we have in connections. And so as a, as a result, uh, with some uh, gracious support of, of the Hewlett Foundation and, and several other foundations, we launched uh, OpenStax College earlier this year to uh, uh, develop a system where educators can adopt books first and then adapt them later rather than uh, the other way around. So for those of you who don't know about OpenStax College, it's a, a library of free community college textbooks that we're building for the highest impact courses. The, the critical elements are, first of all, that the material is absolutely uh, 
a turnkey, so intended to be a turnkey solution for these courses. So we're viewing uh, uh, the, the textbook now as a suite of services that comprises not just the book, not just a collection of resources, but everything that is required for an instructor to be able to adopt the book. Mobile apps, ancillaries, uh, homework systems, uh, analytics in the back end, et cetera. And the idea is to make it extremely easy for people on this end of the curve right, to be able to adopt and use uh, OER. Uh, the other key difference with a lot of the material in, in Connections, as you know, Connections is primarily about user-generated content. But with OpenStax, uh, uh, OpenStax College, we've actually moved towards a professional development model where the, the materials are actually written by professional authors, peer-reviewed, and, and, and edited by a, board, uh, uh, a very high-level uh, set of editorial boards. So that was uh, part one, which is uh, turnkey solutions. The second is the idea of thinking about new kinds of sustainability models. And I would argue that, that today, OER, the world of OER, and in particular the world of OER producers, really lives off to the side of the, the broader ecosystem of uh, uh, including uh, colleges, student groups, legislative uh, uh, organizations. And what we really need to do is move towards a world where we can put OER into the center of this uh, 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 a, a much more productive ecosystem. And so one of the things that we have really tried to do over the last number of years is to exploit the, the CC BY license that all of our materials are developed under and actually build a rather large uh, a group of, of uh, sustaining partners who are actually going to be building material, building uh, services, homework, uh, homework services, uh, tutoring services, printing services around all of these books, and actually be able to send a sustaining uh, revenue back to the project, both to develop new books and also to be able to sustain the project into the long term. So that's just a little bit about uh, different kinds of business models. The other thing that we've, we've really been thinking very hard about for the last three or four years is moving away from simply developing materials and actually uh, move towards uh, uh, systems based on analytics where we can think of building a customized textbook so that every kid gets their own, uh, their own personalized learning experience. So we've been doing a lot of work on building analytic systems in the back, back end of Connections uh, and OpenStax College in order to tune the presentation of problems, material feedback, uh, so that students can have uh, the perfect book for their individual learning interests. Uh, the, the challenge to building any kind of personalized learning uh, environment is, again, a scale problem. How to scale to very large communities of learners and many, many different kinds of learners, and also how to scale to many, many different kinds of subjects. And so in contrast to the, the, the kind of approaches that have been pursued in a lot of the uh, uh, intelligent tutoring world over the last couple decades or so, we're taking a, a, a slightly different approach. So the first is we're going to de uh, be developing the large number uh, amount of content, the large amount of feedback, information, a large number of assessments using the community development enterprise that we've, uh, we've been uh, uh, building with connections. But the second really critical thing is we're, we're replacing the ontology or top rules-based top-down uh, 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 systems that are used for mining analytics, analytics information to tune uh, the uh, presentation to, to students and replace these with the machine learning algorithms, the kind of algorithms that you use every day when Netflix or Amazon suggest a movie or suggest a book or when, or when you do a Google search. So just to give you a sense of how this is going to be working, if you think of this as the connections repository of, of materials, uh, we, we have built around it a number of uh, 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 supporting infrastructure pieces, including uh, Quadbase, which you can think of like uh, a CC BY uh, connections-like repository just for assessments, just for assessments and uh, uh, questions and answers. We built uh, a similar uh, one for interactive simulations, a similar one for video tutorials, and we have a, a peer review system that allows professional societies uh, and other organizations to get involved uh, 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 quality controlling all of these. And then what we have around uh, linking all of these various uh, sets of resources is a, a, a machine learning layer that basically is, uh, provides the interface for instructors to develop courses and then students to interact with those courses, uh, tracks 
the uh, learning progress and, and direct students to the, the, just the right material at just the right time. Actually, do we have the timekeeper? Good, okay. Uh, so the, the last thing I'll just mention about this personalized learning system is we're, we're also working with some really, really uh, fabulous uh, cognitive scientists from Duke uh, and Wash, uh, Wash U uh, to bake in the cognitive science principles uh, into the system. And uh, we are beta, beta testing the, the system right now as we speak at Rice, moving into uh, Georgia Tech uh, and UT El Paso and a few other uh, higher ed schools in the, uh, in the fall, and also in, uh, into the STEM Scopes project. And we hope to have about 500,000 kids using this system this fall, right? This personalized learning system. The key thing for this audience is that the architecture, all the software, and all the content is. Uh, 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 open licensed under open software and, and Creative Commons licenses. And you can check out uh, PLS uh, at ricedsp.org if you'd like to learn a little, a little bit more or, or get involved. The other key element here is that we actually did a very, very uh, fine experiment and actually extracted several neurons out of Vic Vucek's brain. And we're actually growing these uh, on a silicon substrate. Uh, and and the, the, this is actually the heart of, of the, the compute power of the, of the personalized learning. <laughs> OK, so the, the last thing I'll just mention is talk about platforms. Because uh, 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 we're very, very interested in moving into a world where we're not just serving millions of users uh, via our platform, but tens or hundreds of, of millions of users. And that's going to require a, a rethinking of all of our uh, tool set. And the, the key thing is that there's an engineering tension between ease of use of a, of a platform and the quality of the output. And the, one of the things that has, has kept connections away from moving to, to simpler editing interfaces uh, along the lines of more like a wiki-like interface is our desire to be able to produce really, really high quality, not just web output, but uh, PDF print books and, and now uh, EPUBs. So the, the response to this uh, uh, engineering tension has been uh, we're just embarked on a complete redesign of our entire platform uh, that we pro expect to have uh, ready in uh, early 2013. This is a, a project that we're uh, collaborating on with, uh, with uh, engineers at Google. And this is also uh, graciously funded by uh, uh, both Hewlett Foundation and the uh, Open, uh, Open Society Foundations. The key, uh, key things that we're, we're looking at with the new platform is moving from our, our ConnectML based XML markup to an HTML, HTML5 markup so that we have uh, better support for mobile devices. That is also going to give us uh, improved uh, both editing and internationalization capabilities. And finally, in order to truly handle hundreds of millions of, of users, uh, we're going to be migrating the entire tool set up into uh, Google App Engine for scalability. OK, so I, th I think I probably should end there. Uh, Hopefully, uh, this made some sense to you. Hopefully, some of the, the, the trials that, that we've been going through for the last number of years uh, and the solutions that we're developing can be useful not just for our users, but also uh, the community at large. And uh, uh, feel free to check out these URLs if you'd like to learn more. Thanks very much. Super. Thank you so much.